Hey, everybody, make sure as you log in, please make sure that uh, your first and last name are listed along with your organization institution. And uh, if you are a member certified, um, and also a reminder here, make sure your cameras are on. So make sure attendance is true and accurate. We'll get started here in a few minutes. Is anybody talking? Because I can't hear nothing. You are hearing you. You, you. I don't know. All right. Just a reminder as everyone logs in here, uh, we'll get started here in uh, a couple minutes. Wait for everyone to come in. Just make sure you have your first last name listed uh, along with your institution, organization, um, and your membership status, member certified. That will help us out a bunch. Oh, and make sure that your district, sorry, I forgot the district part. Make sure your district is listed as well in your name. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Awesome attendance so far, 105 uh, joining us today, which is great. Um, want to uh, please make sure that everyone knows that you can always ask questions um, throughout. If you could throw them in the, uh, the chat and try to direct message me directly, um, that would be great. So I can pick those up in the chat and uh, we'll try to get those plugged in as we go through. Um, Social media, I know a lot of us are on a very different learning curve. So I'd like to cover just about everything. We try to keep this as broad as possible um, as we go through it. Um, as we begin today, um, just some quick updates from us at Uncommon. Um, we just started the Equipment Manager book study. Great turnout. Uh, we've got over 30 people signed up for that. We still have a few spots. We have closed the, the link. But if you are interested, please contact me directly, um, and I can try to get a book out to you as soon as possible. We are meeting on Mondays and Fridays for that. So um, in the past, if Mondays didn't work out, hopefully Fridays will work out. Reminder for our Clean Out for a Cause program, um, as you guys are getting through uh, winter sports, uh, coming up here, starting spring. If you need clean out boxes, bags, shipping labels, uh, please let us know. And uh, really, AFCA started a new program for us um, called Locker Room Direct Surplus. So for those of you that have uh, done surplus sales or equipment sales in the past and want to maybe take them online or have one and haven't had the chance to do one before, um, we have started a new program uh, where we can run those uh, equipment sales for you online, split the revenue 50-50. Um, doing some great things with that. So if you are interested in more information on that, please let me know. Um, and just a real quick big thanks to all of you. Uh, we collected 235,000 pounds in 2023, which is truly amazing. Um, about 100,000 pounds we've ever collected before, which has been great. And over 85,000 pounds of that went overseas to different programs that we work with, which is great as well. So thank you for all for that. Um, just as a reminder, again, I know I said it twice, so do it again. Just make sure you got your first, last name, school organization, district, certified, um, member, not certified. And just remember to have your cameras on at all times. And uh, for those of you that haven't been on one of these before, at the end, you'll have a QR code. 
to scan to make sure you get credit. So during the call, it helps if you go ahead and try to log in on your phone um, to the website uh, membership portal. So you guys will be able to quickly scan that and uh, get credit for it. Upcoming sessions for everybody. Uh, next one will come up here at the end of February. Um, some relationship development with other departments, which would be great um, to get some feedback on that. A little bit of NOXI information and how that affects not just football, but all sports. Um, and then April, we'll talk about football prep, uh, which would be a really kind of a, a great topic for not only football guys, but people that you know, want to get into football. And then uh, policies and procedures uh, development uh, for equipment rooms will be a great one right before we jump into convention. A uh, little plug would uh, also want to add the mentor mentee program um, to that. If you guys are interested in that, please contact Katie. Um, she's that or use that mentorship.engagement, A-E-M-A at Gmail. Contact her there as well, um, and she can help you either side, mentor or mentee. Uh, make sure that this organization keeps getting stronger by using that program. Really great stuff coming out of there. And uh, today's panel, a uh, great panel put together. Um, Brad is joining us from uh, Central Florida. Um, Anthony is going to help us out from Rutgers. Nicole from Colby College. And then Brian from Arizona is going to help us out, um, help answer some questions, talk about social media, how it's been developed, and, and learn a bit more from everybody on that end. So, again, as we have a bunch more people jumping on, please make sure if you do have questions, uh, send me a direct message through the chat, and I will get to those questions as I can as we go through some of the questions here. Um, without further ado, we'll, we'll jump in. How did you end up being the social media contact for your district or equipment room? Brian, we'll start with you, uh, Anthony, Nicole, and then Brad, we'll get to you here. So Brian, would you start us out? Yeah, yeah, I just, honestly, I just started tweeting. I mean, I'm not like, uh, for us here at Arizona, and the, uh, the McHale Olympic Sports Equipment Room, we don't have a designated uh, Twitter account. We all do our own thing from our personal account. But I just, yeah, I just started tweeting pictures, uh, mainly men's basketball, all the custom shoes we got. Uh, you know, I, I will, you know, tweet out game day stuff, kind of go from there. Uh, I know football, our football equipment room has started um, their own personal uh, football Arizona account. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in a different spot than most. I just tweet from my personal account. So that's how I started. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Anthony. Uh, yeah, so just kind of, you know, similar, like, you know, we're all on our phones. We all like social media. So it was just something fun to do. Uh, when I was at Oregon State, I decided to, like, showcase all the cool stuff that we had and, you know, kind of behind the scenes because, you know, it's, it might not get all the attention, but it's fun. And, you know, we're all proud of what we do in our industry. So, you know, whether it was from personal or, you know, I created at Oregon State and then when I was at Lafayette, I currently don't do one at Rutgers, but uh, I do do all the external communications for the AMA and District 1. Um, and that was just kind of, you know, something passionate and interested in. And, uh, you know, it's fun at the end of the day. And, you know, obviously trying to help our profession and get our exposure out there. The, you know, the better it is, the better we all look. So, uh, yeah, just something to, you know, caught my interest and ran with it. And I you know, still enjoy it to the day. So why not? Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Nicole? Yeah, so the first convention that I went to, Melly actually gave a presentation on social media um, in equipment rooms. And before that, I was just really nervous um, to even get into it. I just didn't want to like post anything controversial or like against the rules. So hearing her speak about it and um, like how easy it could be, it just really calmed my nerves on that. And so when I came back from convention, uh, I told my department that I was interested in starting a Twitter page and it took off from there. Basically. And Brad. Yeah, so when I got to UCF, our equipment page actually had a pretty good following already. So I don't I actually don't do anything with our equipment page, don't have the password to our equipment page, uh, but nothing gets posted without me actually giving the approval of it. 
uh, just because we have an entire social media team here has a ton of people on it, a ton of people uh, with access to the, to the Twitter account. So nothing gets approved without, or nothing gets posted without me approving it, but I don't necessarily ever hit the tweet button, never send anything out. Um, but again, they had a huge following when I got here. So kind of let them just take the ball and run with it and uh, made sure that uh, we're not giving out any too many secrets of what we're doing, what's upcoming space game, things like that. So I uh, kind of let them, kind of take their professional spin on it. And, uh, but like I said, nothing really ever gets approved without me giving the go ahead on it. All right. Thanks guys. We'll jump to question two here. What are the biggest benefits from having a social media presence? And uh, of course, what are the biggest drawbacks? So we'll go and uh, kind of reverse order. Brad, we'll start with you and work our way back through. Yeah. So I'd say our coaches here, they love social media. Coach Malzahn's a big, has a big presence on social media and, seeing him being able to retweet us, tweet at us, uh, see how active we are on Twitter. Uh, that's a huge benefit because he sees the the access that we have to the athletes, to, to recruits, uh, things like that. One of the biggest drawbacks, obviously, anytime uh, your team loses, anytime a uniform flops, things like that, you're going to, you're going to hear about it. Um, but that would probably be the, the biggest drawback. Just everybody, you're never going to make everybody happy. And when people aren't happy on social media, they let you know about it. Thanks, Brad. Nicole? Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest benefits, like for me personally, was just making the connections and getting to know more people in the field. Um, but yeah, the drawbacks, definitely like the trolls out there and people that just want to ruin your day for no reason, um, which I tend to just ignore those and don't engage. But um, that's definitely one of the big drawbacks. Awesome. Anthony. Uh, yeah, I mean, benefits, uh, you know, like you said, uh, you know, just kind of the increased exposure and respect for our profession and what we do. Um, obviously, you know, like sometimes we'll post something that's pretty basic or lame, but, you know, to, to just normal people or fans, it's interesting to them. It's, you know, like we don't have typical nine to five type jobs. And, you know, yeah, we see hundreds of boxes of shoes every day, you know, in our faces, but to show something cool, it's a, it's a good feeling. And obviously, you know, to do something cool, it's, you know, the increased exposure is, is something, uh, you know, extra that, you know, people don't realize it's happening. And, you know, whenever you hear someone mention equipment, it's hopefully a good thing, but, you know, so getting our name out there is a good thing. Uh, drawbacks, uh, you know, like he said, you know, if someone's helmet explodes during a game, it's, oh, look, they didn't do their job. It's, you know, there's some trolls and stuff like that, but we'll, we'll talk about that soon. And, uh, the other thing, uh, like, you know, sometimes, you know, I think Brad said is like, you know, the, you know, you don't want to leak something. Obviously we get everything in before, you know, the games or the events and like, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, cool. I'm going to post what came in. It's like, oh, well you posted that box that hints that we're doing something next week and you know, you can't do that. So sometimes there's like a headache where it's just like, I'm just trying to have fun. And so you just gotta be smart about that. But, uh, if you take the right steps, you'll be fine. So, yeah. Thanks, Anthony. And Brian? Yeah, I mean, they've all hit nail on the head. You know, the benefits are, you know, as Anthony alluded to, the organization, you know, trying to put that out there and show what we do. We're not nine to five. We, we, we do more than full towels and, and, and do laundry for a living. So kind of showing that aspect and the interaction we have and, and uh, with other equipment, equipment managers out there to see what they do and kind of show what we do as a whole organization um, those are benefits along with dealing with the student athletes and retweeting them and, and, and even now some of the recruiting stuff, getting to know the kids before they even show up to see what they put on social media. So, you know, when they do come, you, you can talk to them a little bit. Uh, and just to draw back the trolls, I mean, uh, Arizona has a huge, huge fan base. They're very, very opinionated. Um, you know, there's times uh, last week when we wore our red uniforms, I didn't want to wear them because I knew uh, what the outcry would be uh, because our fans don't like them. And of course, we take an L and then, like, you know, social, my social media gets blown up because everybody thinks we lost because we wore red uniforms. That obviously wasn't the case, but yeah, trolls are, trolls are probably the, the biggest drawback. Thanks, Brian. Jump into the next one here. 
you start representing your employer on social media, was there any formal meeting with your communications department on policies, procedures, guidelines, or you just learn on the fly? I know, Brad, you kind of covered this a little bit, but, and hopefully of the four of you, this will be very different drastically probably across the board. But if you can get into detail about maybe how it started versus maybe what it's at now, or if you've got some background of um, maybe other places you've been as well. So we'll start with you, Brian, and work our way through. Yeah, when I first started doing it, there was really no formal meeting. Just started tweeting, you know, putting out the pictures of what shoes we can get or what I'm passing out to coaches, the players. Uh, that's evolved now into we have all these social media teams, uh, creative people. So now when I get this stuff in, I go to them directly and I say, here's the shoes, this is what's coming in. And they take the better pictures and it goes on the team accounts. So that's kind of how it changed. And I work with them and I have some great people around, you know, and then I think how I do it on my page now is I'll take a picture of a box and, you know, put the eye emoji out there and then, you know, stuff like that. But before it was, wasn't doing anything, working, you know, with the social team. Now it's, now it's, now it's, all, now it's all on the social team. You know, they, they do a tremendous job of, and they have a ton more followers, so it can get out there and everything like that. So, awesome, thanks, Brian. Anthony, quarterback. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty similar. When when I started at Oregon State and Lafayette, running the, the own accounts for equipment, uh, no proper like, hey, here's a meeting, let's do this. But I actually took the initiative to like me with our communications and our marketing um, uh, to get like our official logos and kind of like brand rules just. You know, I'm, I like to consider myself a brand police of sorts. So, you know, to get the custom logos and files and, you know, start a big sheet so that if I'm making a custom graphic from the equipment account, at least I know it's the right logo and not just something you, you know, screenshotted from a PDF or something. So, um, you know, kind of meet with them and make sure that, and then obviously, you know, moving forward, just kind of, you know, you learn as you go. And, you know, like Brian said, is, you know, you let them take the nice fancy photos and, you know, put out the main, you know, cool picture of the shoes, but then, you know, you can do your own like behind the scenes type stuff. And, you know, there's room for both. So kind of just, you know, collaborating with them and talking it out. But yeah, there's never like a, hey, don't do this, do that. Uh, but you kind of ask like, hey, what times of the day are better in this? And you learn from that. Or, you know, like, you know, Nicole said earlier, like the best thing is networking. And because we're all online, we kind of share ideas and figure it out together. So thanks, Anthony. Nicole? Yeah, pretty similar to that. I never had um, any meetings beforehand other than the SID saying to me, you can't just post about football. <laughs> so I cover 32 teams here. So I can get a lot of content and our teams don't really cover it on their own. So it's just me coming up with the posts and taking pictures on my phone and posting it. Um, I don't have anything, any fancy departments here that help me with it. So um, I started with just like copying content that I saw out there until I got comfortable with like coming up with my own stuff and finding my own voice with it. That's a great idea. No sense in recreating the wheel for sure. And Brad. Yeah, pretty similar. Uh, I'd say that anything big picture wise goes out on the main, on the main equipment account. And then we kind of, I kind of use mine as a, uh, as more of supplemental stuff where, okay, yeah, take the big fancy photo of the helmets and the locker room, and then we'll get into the, to the nuts and bolts of it on like my account. But I think that the main thing is it doesn't matter if you're doing it from your personal account, you're still representing your employer, even with that little thing in your bio that says, Hey, thoughts and, or all opinions are my own. You're still representing your employer. If somebody doesn't like it, they're going to let you know about it. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of that. Uh, so I, I never had any formal, formal meeting with my communications department, but we, we work really closely together to make sure that I'm not coming from the left side, they're coming from the right side, and we're trying to meet in the middle. It's we're, we're trying to stay in the middle and make sure that everything around it has one central message. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at it from the equipment account or Brad Anderson's personal account that we're kind of giving that same message regardless of how you're reading it. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. So the trolls thing has come up, I think, with everybody so far. I'm sure we're all familiar with it, whether we've seen it or it's been part of our social media. Um, but Brad, we'll start with you and work our way back through. What kind of best advice do you have? I mean, 
whether it's your staff or you personally dealing with trolls and and, and uh, what kind of advice can you pass along? So, Brad, go ahead. All right. It'll be quick. Ignore them. Yeah. Nicole, anything else? Yeah, same. Like, it's hard for me because I take things so personally. So when, like, somebody say it's clearly not against me, but um, I definitely ignore and don't engage. Um, but I also learned, like, there are situations where somebody's going to say something and you don't want to delete that because then they're going to say, oh, it's censorship and you're not putting. So, like, I just keep it there, but I show, like, I'm, it just disregard it. Cool. Thanks, Nicole. Anthony? Uh, yeah, ignore it is perfect. Um, it's kind of tricky. It's the, you know, obviously, you know, you can do two methods of social media. You just go on, you post it, you leave, and then you come back, whatever, when you do your next post and then never read anything, good or bad. Uh, but that's not fun. We all kind of want a little pat on our back. Um, so, you know, obviously it's fun to see all the good positive, you know, the good comments and retweets and likes and all that. And then, you know, there'll be some negative um you know i think you always ignore it you know i don't like deleting it either it's like hey they want to say it whatever just let it be uh sometimes i do like to try to you know be nice and spin zone it so if someone says something like oh man they never sell anything cool or offer this like it's like you can always be like oh hey you know sorry it's a team exclusive but if you go to the bookstore there's plenty other cool stuff so kind of you know try to make the troll a little happier because at the end of the day they are your fan of some sort uh, they just tend to be a little more negative, but, you know, they're at least looking at your stuff, so they're somewhat interested. So, you know, you could, obviously, if it's real bad, just ignore it. But, you know, if you can try to spin them, be like, hey, don't hate us. We we do some things good, then, you know, try that. Brian, how about you? Yeah, just just what they all said, ignore, don't, don't interact with them. I mean, I, uh, I had fun with them this year, though. I did one thing. You know, our retros hadn't shown up yet, and everybody wanted the retro uniforms. We go to got down to Duke and we wear our normal ones, which I think are great. And we hadn't worn them yet. Everybody's where are they? Where are they? Um, you know, I put a game day post up of what uniforms we're wearing. We play Wisconsin. I put up our regular ones just to mess with them a little bit. Everybody gets upset, and we go out to the game and we're wearing our retros. So that's kind of my spin on it and a couple of people reply back and you know we're like oh that's funny good job and whatnot but 99.9% of the time just ignore them don't even don't even give them the time of day. Thanks Brian. Yeah a couple of side questions we kind of took here um kind of tying them together a little bit. Is there any additional tools besides the standard you know Twitter, Instagram, those types of things are you, uh, how are you managing your photos? Are you guys using things like Hootsuite at all internally? Is there any additional tools that really have been helpful for you guys as you manage social media? I'll start with you, Brian, and uh, go to Anthony and work our way through. I'm so I'm so bad with technology that it's just my phone. Take pictures from my phone. I don't know, you know that that, that that's about it for me. Okay, Anthony. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think we do anything that extreme that we need those, you know, other, you know, uh, you know, type of hoot suites or anything like that. Um, I do like the schedule tweets in advance for, you know, especially all the AMA stuff, like, you know, get things scheduled and figure out, you know, kind of map out what you're going to do. Uh, photo editing, you know, there's random apps, but, you know, obviously the iPhone, the standard stuff, you could do so many incredible things um, to make graphics and stuff, which, you know, you can use photos too, like, I'm, I believe in Illustrator and Photoshop. I'm not that good at Photoshop, but Illustrator is how I make all the graphics for what we do. You know, kind of put in vector files and logos and, you know, photos that you take and kind of create the best. So I think those are good, something, you know, not too hard that, you know, you can figure out and play with. I mean, I kind of taught myself. I'm still not good, but I'll occasionally watch a YouTube video to learn more tricks. And um, yeah, it's just kind of enhanced the thing. But at the end of the day, you post it, you take a photo, you post it, that's going to be the best ever. Nicole? Yeah, I think that's kind of the beauty in it is like anybody can do it. So I don't use anything fancy. It's just my phone and taking pictures on my phone. Um, and I don't do any editing or graphics. So I, I think if your content is there, like people will pick up on it. So it doesn't have to have all of the fanciness, but. And Brad. Yeah, I lean on the professionals. If there's anything that needs to get made, so if we're looking for student managers, if uh, we won uniform of the week that week, 
uh, lean on the professionals in the department that use Photoshop and Illustrator and all those platforms naturally. But as far as using uh, getting photos to to each other, mainly teams or open doors between like us and the content team, especially if it's a if it's a bigger resolution photo. But for the most part, just using your phone is fine. And kind of off that same thing, uh, what other social media avenues? I know we've heard Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, is there, have you guys had any restrictions on what you can and cannot use? Um, TikTok, obviously a big one, and that is a complete game changer. Have you guys gotten into that? Um, Brad, we'll start with you and work our way back. Yeah, we have our social media team. They use every avenue uh, for social for social networks that they can. We've had, we have TikTok. I'm not even sure if they're even allowed to use it because of our school Wi-Fi anymore. Um, but we, we, they are a social team. They try to utilize every single avenue. If anything new pops up, if thread, threads was hot for like three days so that they were all over threads and then now no one posts on threads anymore, apparently. So whatever, whatever social media account is, is active at that time uh, and hot at that time, they're trying to, trying to capitalize on it. Nicole. Yeah, uh, where it's just me, I kind of stick to just Twitter. Um, I feel like that's more of a professional route. And then I have like my personal accounts on the others. But um, yeah, I can't think of like any other format. Cool. Anthony, I know you manage a lot with the AMA, so. Yeah, um, personally, I mean, obviously, you know, you once every new app comes out, you always download it and see what it is. Even, you know, like Brad said, threads for a hot minute. Um, but for like the AMA and I think what's best for what we do in equipment, uh, obviously, you know, Instagram is cool, um, but it's very photo heavy. And sometimes it's hard to get photos where I like Twitter and X, whatever you want to call it nowadays, personally, just because you've got the photos, you can do videos and then it's good to just have a conversation. So you can just put out there like, hey, what do you guys, how do you pack shoes for basketball or how many pairs do you bring? And then like you can just get people to talk, whereas you know, Instagram, you don't get those comments, you know, really, you know, you know, maybe through a story or something, but Twitter can do it all. So I think Twitter is the best. Uh, I'm a big proponent in LinkedIn. Obviously, you know, it's your mm. active professional resume. I think we all should have it. It's not just looking for a job. It's to showcase some of your stuff and, you know, see what other people are doing. Like, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, hype people up there just be like, oh, I interviewed and this, 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 you know, it's all these crazy stories, but I think it's fun. It's good to see the professional side and, you know, you can do some things there that, you know, Twitter is a little different. So I think those are the big ones. Uh, you know, TikTok's fun, but it's a young person's game. And that's not me at the moment. Um, a lot of fun stuff. And I see a lot of cool student, just a lot of student manager videos and stuff and um, more props to them because it's awesome and hope they keep it up. And, you know, there's a lot of videos and songs and trends and, uh, yeah, but I think Twitter is great for, you know, engagement. And I think LinkedIn is great for professional stuff. All right, thanks. Brian? Yeah, I, I stick to Instagram and Twitter. You know, I'll post stuff on my first Facebook page. But Twitter and, Twitter and Instagram are the best. Like I know our social media accounts uh, for the school can't use TikTok. Uh, so they had them at one point and it, they said they weren't allowed to use them. So... But our social teams are all over Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, Twitter. But like Anthony that said, I, I think Twitter is the best way. I like that the best to get the information out there. So, thanks, Brian. Jump to the next question here. How do you tell you stay on top of the balance? You guys work a ton of hours and constantly. Are you making time? Is there a time of the day that you're scheduling and? Kind of how are you balancing it with everything you also got to do in the day? So Brian, we'll start with you and, and work our way back through. Yeah, you know, it's it's on game days I post a lot. So I, I'm a routine person, so I know what time I'm posting. So I'll post then and, and go from there. But you know, I, I have my notifications on of the people I want to see and it, it'll pop up on my phone. So I, I keep keep the trends going that way. But yeah, I mean it's but as we all know in equipment, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. So if there is some downtime at 10, 15 minutes, you scroll through social media real quick to see what's going on or the end of the day to just kind of relax. But yeah, I mean, it's it's tough when you're working the hours and trying to stay up with everything going on. It's it's not an easy task, but you know, you can find it five, 10 minutes here and there just to take your take your mind off the job to see see what's going on. Anthony? Uh yeah, I mean it's 
to me, it's important to realize like, hey, uh, none of us get paid to do this. It's fun. It's a side part of the job or, you know, what we'd like to volunteer and help out with. Uh, so don't force anything like um, obviously to be good and successful at this. Um, you either need to have really cool school that you work for or fan base that are crazy or, you know, to, even if you're at a small school, just need to be consistent and have um, like, you know, set a schedule and, you know, kind of just care about it. Like relatively, you know, don't just post once every three months. It's like, all right, well, you're not going to grow a following that way. Um, you know, I, like I said earlier, scheduling tweets is key. Like, you know, if I'm posting graphics of get to know the equipment managers, like, I'll schedule that out, you know, a week in advance, I'll make the graphics and schedule out till like oh, four o'clock tomorrow, something's getting tweeted that I don't have to be on my phone or do it. Uh, but then obviously, you know, you want to check it to get some engagement in this. But like I said, we don't get paid to do it. It's just fun. So keep it that way, you know, keep your family time, family time, personal, personal. And you know, if you have some time, check it out, but nothing life or death on the phone that you can't do without. So yeah, just schedule. Yeah. Nicole? Yeah, I mine's for fun too. So it mine's been more sporadic lately, just where uh I'm the only one here. So <laughs> my job has taken over more than what I can post. But um I've turned to using it more as an educational tool. So like if I come up with something during the day that's like something I haven't encountered before, I'll post the issue and then like the resolution. And that's getting me like more DMs from people, like asking how I was able to figure it out. So I've had more interaction with that lately. So I just don't have to post every day, but. Great. And Brad. Yeah, I don't really have a schedule or anything, especially from me just managing the personal account. I know that with, uh, with the off season coming up, we're always looking to, okay, well, what's coming up? What, uh, what are we doing for the spring game? What are we doing helmet wise, things like that? What can we start teasing now to start getting engagement from, a from our equipment page at UCF? But for the most part, it's, if I feel like tweeting something, I'll tweet it. If I don't feel like interacting with anybody that day, I don't interact constantly scrolling, constantly looking at what's, uh, what's happening and what's going on, but not really ever, ever having a, uh, having a schedule of what I'm doing. Thanks, Brad. We talked about kind of personal stuff already, but do you have any advice of kind of creating some separation between the personal and professional? And that's really tough, just life, let alone social media. So Brad, if you could share a little bit and we'll work our way through. Yeah, I'll go off on a tangent here about this because you always think as a young kid, you uh, your, your personal Twitter is your personal Twitter. And when I got hired by the XFL, I uh, get a call from their HR department and they're like, hey, Brad, uh, do you know what this calls in regards to? And I, no, I have no idea. They go, well, in 2012 or some year, many, many years ago, you liked a tweet that brought up a red flag for us. I'm like, oh, well, can you tell me what the tweet was? And they said, no, unfortunately, we can't just, if you want to go back through your tweets and your likes and your mentions and everything, you can you can go back through or you can delete your your account and just kind of start from ground zero. And so you never know what professional team you're going to get with what professional organization you're going to become a part of that they have different rules and regulations than your current employer does and so i actually deleted my twitter account in 2019 and created a whole new one so the one that i have right now is only three years three four years old uh but that was mainly because xfl wwe told me hey you liked something many many years ago that brought up a red flag for us so uh that's why i always say like i I'm the biggest fan of my employer right now. I'll like every single thing that has to do with UCF. I went to Florida state, went to work down Miami. I'm not liking any of anything in state because you never know what coach Malzahn is looking at. You never know who has a notification for when you, when you tweet, when with you, you never know, you could delete something after two seconds and the head coach has a notification for you and he takes a screenshot and all of a sudden it's something bigger than, than it needs to be. So you never know uh, what's what's coming about. So I try to, as much as it is my personal account, it's also kind of my professional account, and try to keep uh, keep it keep that view the same way, and not really ever uh, ever stray too far from from my employer. That's awesome advice, Brad. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think like with platforms like Twitter, they're all public profiles, so like anybody can see anything that you do. Um, like my personal Facebook account, I'm more open on just because I control who I'm friends with on there and who can see my stuff. Um, 
but on Twitter too, like my personal account, I still try to keep it as professional as possible because the connections that I've made through my equipment account, I've tried to carry over on my personal account just so I can have those people if I change jobs. Um, so I keep like the more public profiles as professional as possible. Thanks, Nicole. Anthony? Yeah, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I love Brad's story. And, uh, you know, I, I like you said it earlier, like the whole, you know, my opinions don't reflect my my employer. It's like, well, that's not true. Every, everything down there is public and it's public for forever. So, you know, just got to be smart and, you know, you can have fun, but just be smart with what you do or like or click. Um, you know, it, it's hard. It's, you know, you want to do a lot of things and have fun, but just got to kind of separate that. Um even with personal, like, you know, like right now, I don't have a Rutgers EQ that I manage, um, but I'll still post Rutgers stuff from my personal account. Obviously, it's my job. It's, I'm here more than I'm at home sometimes. Um, so you can still do, you know, work stuff on your personal, just kind of be smart with it. But you also need to be smart if you're doing a Rutgers EQ account as well. So, you know, just kind of always, you know, be smart, figure it out. Um, you know, I think it's always going to be professional. And you know, kind of like Nicole said, like, you know, LinkedIn, you know, you can do certain things, Facebook, you know, do different things, Twitter, do this, um, you know, everything's public though, you know, for the most part, even if it, you think it's not, someone could find someone to find someone and, you know, there's a lot of things. So, yeah, I think just always, you know, be mindful what you say and especially click, you know, like Brad said, you don't think it's anything, anyone sees it, but someone sees it and, you know, uh, just, have uh, stories to tell no matter what. Thanks, Anthony. Brian? Yeah, I, mean, I do a lot of, on my personal, I do all my tweets for, for work. So I, I try to stay with a lot of work, work related stuff. Uh, you know, I also go on and post when I'm playing golf in my free time and kind of show sports related things and with likes and retweets. I try to stick. You know, as Brad said, within the employer, um, you know, every once in a while, I'll put a model and honor out there. If they're, they got a big win, I went to Xavier, so still follow them. Uh, but, like, a lot of the retweets and stuff is more the professional side of sports. You know, big Bengals fan, so I'll do that stuff. But, yeah, just be aware of what I'm posting and knowing that down the line, if I'm not here, I can go somewhere else and know that, you know, they can look at what I like, what I retweet, what I tweet, what I – Put on my story so just just know that like it's out there like everyone said it's it's public domain so it never goes away so you know you know we all make mistakes every once in a while but you just learn from them but just try to try to be smart with it yeah, I, i'll kind of piggyback there on brian and kind of brad too like uh you know i i went to michigan i'm a proud wolverine obviously Rutgers were in the big 10 Rutgers, you know, we go heads up. I want Rutgers to win, but, you know, I'm still proud of Michigan, so I'll hype them up. And, you know, you don't have to, but I do. It's, you know, it's part of your life. So just be aware that you might have to answer that. And I'm fine answering. And if one day someone doesn't want to hire me because I'm proud of my alma mater, then so be it. But, you know, just keep that in your mind. Like, you can either not do it or do it. But as long as you can live with yourself either way, then that's what it's about. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We're here, here at the end. I uh, do have, I want to grab the uh, um, QR code, but do want to take some time. Jalen, I know you had something to say before we close out here. Jalen? Uh, yes. Uh, Melly, if you would like to go ahead and speak, uh, the floor is yours. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a great um uh... Uh, an informative uh, a workshop. I, I hope everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. I want to thank all of you that are putting out uh, what we do, uh, you know, to the universe. It's really important that we are seen, heard, recognized, and respected. So all of you in all of your fun little ways, or uh, everyone's got their own style of how they engage with social media, and I love all of it. Uh, I'm here for all of it. Um, and I think it's important because we need to start being a more of a front facing organization. We need to start tooting our horns. And sometimes that's difficult for all of us to do. I want to personally thank Anthony Martin for everything he does for the AMA. He just really stepped in and has taken over 
um, all of our external communications, and he's done a wonderful job. I want to personally thank you, Anthony, for what you're doing for the organization. Thank you so much. Um, just want to also just give a quick blurb out to our uh, national convention that's coming up. Uh, there's a skeleton schedule up already. Uh, we've got uh, parties. We've got a tour set up where we're going to have us a, a lovely speaker, wonderful workshops, and all our, all of our friend vendors will be there. So I'm personally inviting all of you to uh, get to Atlanta, uh, hop on a plane, train, automobile, which is one of my favorite movies uh, from John Candy. So ho hopefully some of you uh, know that reference. Uh, donkey, whatever you can. Uh, Get roommates. Let's get let's get to Atlanta and celebrate where what we've accomplished as an association. And looking forward to another fifty years and or and, and forever because there's always going to be athletics. Anyway, thanks for indulging me in uh, uh, speaking to you at the end. I appreciate all of your time and attention. I'm going to see if I can finish this thing up. Uh, thanks, Melly. Uh, just in closing, Josh. Thanks once again for always. Uh, leading the panels and uh, leading the calls. You do a great job with that each month, and we appreciate it. Katie, great job with putting this panel together. Thank you, Anthony, Brad, Nicole. Uh, we had 147 people, and Brian as well. Thank you all. We had 147 people on this call today, which is the most we've uh, had on uh, these calls in the last year and a half. So uh, it's constantly growing, constantly getting more engagement. And uh, we are uh, very grateful for that. Uh, anybody wanting to get involved that works in the District 5, we are looking for a social media director. Me and Anthony actually discussed this yesterday. So anybody on the call uh, that works, lives in District 5, interested in uh, being our social media director, you can contact me or anthony martin and we will get you set up with that so uh, we've been having a difficult time finding somebody to take that over so would be very grateful if anybody is willing to uh, serve the organization in that way if anyone's interested in being on the next panel for on february 28th the uh, relationship development panel please reach out to me uh or katie would love to uh, get some interest in that and josh i think there's a couple of people may have ask some questions in the chat or I saw one that's at raised their hand asking if they could ask a question. So I'll kick it back to Josh here. We still got some time. So if anybody does have any questions they would like to ask the panel, uh, please, please do so at this time. And thank you all for your time today. Easton, I saw you had a question. Would you care to add if you're still available? Yes, I was just, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was just wondering if anyone has any like um, suggestions for off season or, you know, I work mostly with football, but technically I work with all sports, but I don't really take hands on part in any of the Olympic sports. Um, is there, is there anything anyone can, you know, kind of give me pointers for, for content ideas for those times during Olympic sports seasons and the off season? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer. Um, so obviously, you know, uh, I think that's kind of something that you should, you know, be mindful of where it's like, you know, if you are calling it at, you know, Rutgers EQ versus at Rutgers football EQ, just kind of, if you're going to be one, then, you know, to be successful, just kind of like um, Nicole said, like she does all the sports. So you got to spread the love. And obviously, you know, your swim team doesn't get as much cool stuff as football does and not as frequently, but still like, I don't know if you've seen swim caps, they're pretty cool in themselves and, you know, finding times to post that. So obviously, you know, if you do football mainly at, you know, the College of Idaho, like obviously you're going to be busy and you've got the relationships daily with practices and managers and athletes, you know, more readily available than say your basketball team. But, you know, try, try to, you know, even if you know someone over there or, you know, an assistant coach, be like, hey, share me a photo. I'll post it on the account. Uh, you know, same thing with like the AMA, like, the exam committee was in Raleigh yesterday. I'm not in Raleigh. Someone texted me a photo. I put it out on the main account. Um, so if you do all your sports, then there's more things to do. But even football, if you were just football, you know, there's spring balls, there's reconditioning in the off season. There's, hey, people love, oh, hey, I got a pallet of boxes. That goes crazy. But, you know, it is the off season. So enjoy that as well. Like, you know, during the season, you could have a photo every week of helmet versus helmet matchup for week one, week two. 
but then in the off season, like you don't have to post every week or every day, but you know, from there you can kind of, you know, start topics about like, oh, hey, I'm looking to reorganize my, how I stack my shoulder pads and you have ideas and try to get engagement that way and learn some things that, you know, to get better in the off season or, you know, just kind of relax in the off season. So some ideas. Yeah, I'll follow up on that one. Like at UCF, we do everybody's area codes on the front of their helmets. So like one day in the off season, I was just like, hey, how many different area codes do you guys think we have on the helmets? And the amount of engagement we got from that was was awesome. How many div- how many guys do you think are in a speed flex compared to an F7? How many guys are in X-Tech shoulder pads compared to Douglas shoulder pads? Do you guys know the difference between shoulder pads? So in the off season, it's kind of your, like, like my question and answer session rather than in season because in season you always have stuff. You always have uniforms coming up. You always have players to highlight. You always have things that are going on that you can, that you can highlight. So being able to, to use the off season for the question and answer and kind of see where your, where your followers want you to go as far as, uh, as far as your personal page or professional page goes, that kind of, you can use the off season to help steer that as well. Yeah, I think I, I think the boxes are a big thing. I think Anthony does a good job of retweeting that from the from the main account too. Is you know to show people like, hey, we're we're working. It might be June, but we're getting all the stuff in July. We're getting all the stuff in you know. And uh, in terms of the Olympic sports, you know, anything that comes in, yeah, take pictures of it. Get somebody send you pictures of it. You know, if there's a gear issue day. You know, and everything's all lined up all together. Take a picture of everything. You know, this is what we're passing out to the soccer team. This is what we're passing out to tennis. You know, it shows that those other sports are getting a lot of stuff along with the footballs and and basketball. So, you know, just different. Just have biggest thing, anything with social media, just have fun. You know, as long as you're doing that. Uh, to show our profession and how hard we work, not only during the year, but you know, in the off season, we do get some time off. But you know, we're we're still we're still out there grinding. So have fun with it. Post pictures of your kid and EQ with you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just did right before this call. He's pushing towel card around. It was awesome. Any other questions? I know there's a couple questions on how to set up Facebook and things, but I'd say the suggestion there, just work with your um, department and see what their requirements are there. I'll, I'll do some uh, plugs for the AMA. Obviously, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter uh, at AMA underscore 74 is the main account. Um, a lot of good stuff there. Uh, so I'm here. Um, each, all our districts have our own accounts. So at AMA, a underscore district and then whatever number you are so one for one two for two i uh, put them in the chat as well the women of the ama have at ama underscore women uh, so that's a lot of good stuff on twitter you'll see a lot uh, next week or so we're obviously pushing promoting convention big years 50 anniversaries in atlanta um we're doing a series right now where we get to know uh, you know, equipment manager. So we're starting with, you know, some of the top leadership. We're going to do a bunch of people to so make custom graphics for everyone. And uh, just a fun way to, you know, for everyone to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, you know, you might not have a good relationship with Brian, but hey, here's a graphic about Brian. And look, he likes to play golf. Uh, you know, so when you see him, you can be like, hey, how's uh, your game going? Um, so yeah, I think it's a cool thing. Uh, we have LinkedIn as well. Um, we have a company page. So it's just Athletic Equipment Managers Association. It's got a blue background with white letters. So you can't miss it. It's uh, a lot of the same thing as uh, Twitter, but there will also be something different there too. And then uh, we're, we're starting a YouTube. So a lot of these recorded sessions will be on YouTube uh, at AMA underscore 74 as well. Um, we're going to hopefully put some more things working with Katie and a couple other people about getting some, you know, content up there. It's a little harder because, uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, we can barely do our photos at certain times and video is a little trickier, but we're going to, we're going to get some people to help and it'll be fun and just kind of a nice thing that, you know, you know, Hey, uh, here's a video on something, you know, even if it's just like a tour of the equipment room or so, yeah, just stay tuned for more on all that stuff. So. Uh, a real quick plug for the mentorship program. Uh, I know I owe a couple of people mentors. Um, hopefully I'll get to that this week. It's just a kind of crazy month. So I owe a couple of those. If you would like a mentor or want to be a, um, a mentor, or if you 
want a mentor or want to be a mentor, um, please email me um, or text me. Um, things are going really well with that. Um, we'll have the same like new member um, meet and greet at the convention where we kind of um, have our partners meet each other if you haven't already in person. Um, still keep in contact if you've got um, a mentor from last year. Um, you know, this is kind of an ongoing thing. We match you up once, but you can um, continue to grow with them as well. Um, and I just got a message from um, one of our friends in Cali. Um, he is at, uh, Jay, I don't remember what school you're at right now. He's at a JUCO. He does this really amazing program for JUCO um, um, members, sorry, brain fart. Um, and he is looking for some support for that JUCO um, event. So if you would like to help Jay with his um, JUCO event, you can um, message me or message Jay and we can kind of get um, some more involvement and some more support with our JUCO friends. That's all I got. All right. Well, thank you. Everybody. Um, thank you, everybody. Great uh, session. And we'll see you uh, in about a month. Um, I just saw something about um, previous meetings. They'll be on YouTube hopefully soon. We're up until November, I think, or October. We'll have the next couple up soon. Um, but you don't get videos from being a part of the, the day call. So just a heads up. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Hey, buddy. I'll get you on a panel. Hey, uh, where's, the, where's the QR code at? Should be shared on the screen. Did I miss it? Nope, it's there. Should be somewhere there, Stick. It says get your CEUs. I don't need them. It's fine. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you here in a month. Uh, I I can't make that panel, bro. I, I got I got a business trip I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be on a flight. Um, All right. So we'll figure something out. You're gonna be a professional equipment manager thing, though. No? Uh, in in Atlanta, the Orlando one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to get Brendan to get us an invitation for that. So hopefully we'll see you there. You need me to make a phone call? Call my guy right now. Well, I'm just waiting an email back. So hopefully we won't need one. All right, well, you let, let me you know. know. All right. See you guys. All right, buddy.